It has been an exciting and fulfilling one and a half year journey of the Chamada Report. A show about development issues, a show about you and with you, or put it this way, a show about stories that transform lives. And Elijah, as it is said, there comes a time when a tree cutter, to use lay language, has to take a break in order to sharpen the axe. That moment has come. The Chamwada Report is taking a season break. Well, for me, it's a bittersweet moment. Bitter because we are taking a break, but sweet simply because of the reason that I've been part of this great team, Charms Media team, that tells great stories that transform life. Indeed, but this is just a break. The break is not forever. Uh, while we are on break. Champs Media will be busy producing lots and lots of content and in one way or another you may be back on air with the content other than the Chamada report. Exactly. So let's have a look at what we have on today's program. In today's program we are looking at how the aviation industry works and the role of that sector in Kenya's economy. Kenyan farmers uh, are benefiting by virtue of supplying to this specific demand uh, by airlines that require food. From employment, uh, tourism, horticultural sector, hospitality, you name it. It's about 80% of our tourists who come in, come in by air. We will be speaking to various players in the industry, Kenya Airports Authority, the airlines and the regulator, the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, among others. We have 460 airports and airstrips. Kenya Airways is vertically integrated into the economy of Kenya. If you look at it, we source from this economy. We buy products. We are the largest restaurant in Kenya. An airport, it creates opportunities for people. We want to go to specifics. How does the industry work and who does what? There are many players in the aviation industry. In Kenya, the industry is regulated by the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. KCAA. Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, uh, is the organization that regulates everything to do with civil aviation in this country. That involves licensing, we license pilots, we license engineers, we license air traffic controllers, uh, we also license cabin crew for airlines, we license air operators. The Kenyan aviation rules are applied as per international standards. The global body for the regulation and operation of civilian aircraft is under the domicile and regulatory control of the International Civil Aviation Organization, that is ICAO. There are 191 member states or countries uh, who operate into, into that, uh, who, who they regulate globally. The Kenya Civil Aviation Authority is the custodian of the register of aircraft. We are the NTSA for aircraft registration. NTSA registers cars. They give them the number plates. We give the number plates for aeroplanes and the Kenya register is 5Y. So when you look at an aeroplane you'll find that it has a 5Y and then three letters after that. So like 5Y, A, B, C. Apart from playing the regulatory role, KCAA is also a service provider. We provide air traffic services. That is, uh, the, we, you know, the air traffic controllers. We're the people who will tell an airplane, cleared for takeoff, or you're cleared to land. And when they are airborne, we also help them in their navigation. And our, the primary role in air traffic control is to keep aircraft separate from each other. In Kenya, there are 460 airports and airstrips. Main airports are eight, and the rest are airstrips. And that brings us to the other key player in the industry, Kenya Airports Authority. The authority administers, controls, and manages airports in the country. The vision for Kenya Airports Authority is to provide the, the necessary infrastructure for us to support both uh, the businesses, the travel of the Kenyans, and that we also have an infrastructure in place and, uh, and that we are commercially attractive enough for airlines and visitors 
to come to Kenya. KAA provides and maintains facilities necessary for efficient operations of aircraft. It provides rescue and firefighting equipment services as well. The safety and, and the security of the passenger is something that concerns us every day and this is something that we work on constantly. And we are working on trying to improve it every day, uh, both short term, long term, uh, medium term, uh, throughout the network of airports and even in between them. So I would say that the measures that we have put in place and the way that we are approaching uh, security and safety is something that I'm very proud of uh, to be a part of. The airline operators are the tenants of the airports among other users. Airlines operate under the International Air Transport Association regulations. KQ is a, what is called an IATA notation because we are part of the International Airlines Transport Association and each carrier is given a notation, uh, a code that is a unique identifier. So that is why KQ is a KQ and not KA. Jomo Kenyatta International Airport's passenger throughput in December 2016 grew by 6.2 percent from the figure recorded same month in 2015 to hit about 627,000 passengers. Aircraft movement improved by 4.4 percent to record 9,141 over the same period. Every day in our, on our network we carry more than 11,000 people. We also carry more than 160 tons of cargo daily, flying more than 160 flight sectors across our network. The expansion of the airport with the launch of new terminals has had a positive impact on traffic and passenger flow. There were about 55,000 aircraft landing or taking off at JKIA in 2016-2017 period as compared to 52,000 in the previous period. In December 2016, there were 142,000 passengers using Moi International Airport in Mombasa. Kisumu International Airport had about 34,000, and Eldoret International Airport about 20,500. Generally, across the world, air transport is sensitive to threats like insecurity, epidemics, and economic trends. When it comes to the price of air tickets, many factors count. There is a fee charged by airport authorities that is known as passenger service charge, which is normally included on the ticket price. Kenya's charges are relatively high as compared to other airports, according to the KAA managing director. One of the things that we need to do is to reduce the passenger service charge. Today it costs 50 US dollars per passenger to travel to and from, uh, from Jomo. And if you compare to the airports around us, like Addis, they charge 25 US dollars. Uh, if you compare to Johannesburg, they charge 27 dollars. Uh, if you compare to, to Dubai, they charge 6 dollars. We are in the process now of, of uh, looking over the fee structure to see if, what, what kind of opportunities we have to reduce it. But we need to compensate for a revenue loss. Still on how the aviation industry works, it is the operator who literally owns the passenger. Hence, when there is any hitch, the passenger tends to blame the airline even when the airline is not responsible for the problem. There are instances where you face problems. For example, you have a runway shutdown because mm. of a, an, an aircraft that had an incident at the airport. And sometimes we get wrongly uh, accused of mm. delaying flights because of incidences like that. Those things are normally out of our control because if you have a runway that is shut down for three hours, what we as an operator have has to do is divert flights to other locations and then start figuring out, okay, how do we come back to operation, synchronizing all our network to take into account when we will come back. And those things are normally very difficult because you don't always plan for disruptions. But when we have a disruption, we have a system in place to be able to, to come back from the disruption. The customer concept for us is, 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 is two ways. We have the airlines and all of the, the supply chain to the airline, which is the ground handler, uh, 
the ticket office, it could be every kind of other service provider to the airline, fuel provider or whatever that might be, or technical. And then we have the passenger. Uh, and the passengers are using our services. Uh, and we, we have a touch point with them, you know, like at security, at the immigration point, uh, or at any other points, you know, like pass we have passenger service managers walking around the, uh, the floors. Uh, and we do cleaning, you know, or washrooms or the facilities in general. And of course we will deal with the passenger claims or, or if they have any grievances, you know. But, but the, it's the airlines that own the passenger from that point of view. So they, if, if they have any uh, claims or, or, or comments about their journey, uh, it's, it's the airline that is usually uh, handling it. And then they and the airline come back to us and say that, okay, we had some issues with gate number XX. We move on to yet another topical yeah. issue. A deal was struck between Kenya and the US when former President Barack Obama visited Kenya. A deal on direct flights. Our governments are also working to launch direct flights between Kenya and the United States as soon as possible. So the question many are asking is, how far is the implementation of that deal? First, Kenya has yet to be cleared for what is known as Category 1 status of security and operations, and the driver for the process of being cleared for that status is the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Category 1 status is when a country passes an IASA audit, International Aviation Safety Assessment Audit, IASA. When you pass that audit, you're given a category one status. That means that as a state, Kenya will be allowed its carriers to fly to the United States of America. If you're category two, you will not be allowed to go to the United States. Category two means that the United States is not satisfied that a country has a secure and effective and powerful safety oversight system of operators. So you see, Right now, we're not in any category because we've never been to the U.S. So we are applying for the first time. The good news, according to KCAA, is that Kenya is in the final stages of that process. In the last review uh, that we had, we passed everything. There was uh, 300 audit questions that we, we had to comply with. In the last uh, audit that program that we did, we, were, we conducted what is known as a Universal Safety Oversight Audit Program. We scored 78.4%. There is one more step, skills test for engineers, and Kenya will be good to fly directly to the USA and vice versa. The current airline that's capable of doing that is KQ but it's not restricted to KQ. Likewise, any American airline that wishes to fly to Kenya will then be allowed to fly into Kenya. The one that is most likely to start would be, say, Delta Airlines, we think, because they are already a, a Sky Team partner with KQ. And when the right time comes, will KQ be the first to fly directly to the US? What is in the interest of Kenya Airways for on, uh, on uh, the US? is first co-sharing with the U.S. carrier and with our partners in SkyTeam, Delta, because it will, it will enable me to be able to sell, for example, you a ticket on KQ ticket stock okay. to be able to travel to the U.S. The second interest is our ability to fly to the U.S. That will be a commercial decision. When the other approvals are done, then we will do the commercial, uh, we will make the commercial justification. There's a lot of, of Americans traveling to Kenya today or to East Africa and, and having them traveling directly to Nairobi would, it, it's a completely different thing than having them to travel either via Amsterdam or, or they go uh, via Addis to, to the United States. Of course we would like to have them traveling directly to, uh, to, to Nairobi and to Kenya and it will open a completely different market to us. We are discussing Aviation Kenya in part one of this show. We looked into how aviation works. Time now to look into the business side of the sector. About 80% of our tourists who come in, come in by air. That alone is uh, a significant factor. Then you look at our produce. We are talking about flowers, 
horticultural produce that we are exporting out, it goes by air. That is how important aviation is to Kenya. It means when air travel is negatively affected, the impact is spread right into the hospitality industry. Uh, case in point, uh, Mombasa, which for a bit of time was struggling due to travel advisories. With the travel advisories, you don't have too many tourists coming into uh, Mombasa. Now it has picked up, but for a bit of time, Mombasa was struggling and hotels were reducing the number of employees. Once the tourists land at the airport, they, they have to sleep in our hotels. And the people who serve as waiters, waitresses, they're Kenyans. The food they eat, the vehicles that move them around, you know, the, the fueling station. So you get that, uh, there's that catalytic effect that uh, the aviation sector offers. You look at ground handlers, you look at uh, fuel providers. We are looking at a uh, contribution of 1.1% to the GDP of this country, which is significant. If you look at uh, what is indicated in Vision 2030, aviation industry is considered to be a key enabler. When it comes to job creation, it is estimated that the aviation sector employs about half a million people directly and indirectly. KAA alone has about 2,055 employees in all its airports. The Kenya Civil Aviation Authority has about 700, while Kenya Airways has about 4,000 directly and 4,000 indirectly. There are many other employers, including both the international and local airlines. If you visit Kisumu Airport, which uh, initially was a small airport, you notice that by its expansion, now there are more taxi drivers that always park around the airport. There, there are more service providers positioning uh, to benefit from the airport. An airport is like, um, it creates opportunities for people. You know, you can travel somewhere and then you can experience something. And then on that side it could be a business or a person doing something that can generate, you know, like income and opportunities. The movement of experts, because you notice initially all highly trained people were concentrated in Nairobi, you know, the only place with the electricity and tarmac road. Mm -hmm. But now with the airline, uh, you can get a consultant anywhere in this country. Uh, as far as Trukana, there is actually a, a town growing on Lake Trukana called Loyangalani. It has indirectly benefited from domestic travel. Every year they have a cultural festival and they have over uh, 2,000 guests that just come in to participate in this cultural festival. From employment, we move to the contribution of cargo handling to the economy. Kenya Airways is one of the major cargo handlers. We now join Brian Obuya to give us a glimpse into what goes out and what comes into Kenya. Cargo business is KQ's second most important source of revenue at 10% after passenger business. We sought to find out from the carrier's cargo handling manager in order of priority what kind of exports the airline handles. Flowers are the largest uh, export segment, uh, then followed by uh, uh, fresh vegetables, and thereafter a bit of the fresh frozen fish. There is also meat that goes mainly to the Middle East. We have a close partnership with the Kenya Meat Commission and uh, Dubai uh, and the Middle East in general is, is the largest market for, for meat. Even delicate products like day-old chips. We know the Kenchik uh, in Lemuru, Tigoni, is a uh, is one of our biggest customers. So they are exporting into Dar es Salaam, um, which is, I believe, their largest market. And the potential for intra-African trade is enormous. Uh, the largest export market in Africa is uh, South Africa. Uh, South Africa has well-developed industries that are really distributing uh, quite a lot of products uh, uh, into the region. 
uh, their key supermarket chains, Decons, Woolworths. <clears throat> Those are part of the products coming through. But our own products like the Kivian uh, juice, uh, I know like uh, Ethiopian Airlines ex uh, imports a whole, a whole bunch of uh, these juices uh, for their in-flight uh, product. Finally, what comes into Kenya is mainly machinery and electronics. In fact, uh, we find a lot of agents uh, want to use Nairobi as a distribution point. Uh, as you're aware, uh, Samsung has a big facility in, in Nairobi and uh, they will actually redistribute to the region from here. For airlines, the major source of revenue are passengers and cargo. For example, behind me is fresh farm produce being loaded into this Dreamliner off to Paris, France, 13 minutes to 11 p.m. For the Chamada Report, I'm Brian Obuya. All right, the trickle-down effect of the aviation industry right into the villages is this. Pick these people in Nyeri, for example. They earn a living by collecting and transporting avocados for export with so many avocado farmers in the chain. Now on a process, eh? In hand airport. A rafu could talk up. Talk up. In hand a raya. Sasa was good on a cura. On a semi time, son. Sweet potato farming is another sector that has benefited from the aviation sector. Uh, long before the, the coming of the international market, a quarter of an acre could give me an average of 10,000 with proper uh, farm practices by harvest. Now we are getting over 20, around 25,000 to 30 per quarter of an acre. Other direct and indirect jobs in the value chain are created through in-flight catering services. One can say there are countless restaurants in the skies or call them flying restaurants. We source from this economy. We buy products. We are the largest restaurant in Kenya because we serve the most number of meals, a lot of those products we buy from the Kenyan market. The food on KQ is supplied by NAS, an on-site airport catering facility supplying over 30 international airlines that fly into and out of Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in Nairobi and Moi International Airport in Mombasa. So Mama Boga out there in the country benefits directly from aviation. Finally, in this show, we look at the gaps and the potential. First, Kenya's airports have yet to become business hubs as compared to other international airports in the world. We notice that Dubai is as good as a supermarket. It's not even an airport. You know, thousands of planes are landing and leaving, but they designed the airport in such a way that it's a place for people to purchase products. And in the process of people purchasing products, the government makes money through the tax of those products. A lot of those products are not even made in, in, in the United Arab Emirates. So you notice that Kenya has not fully ex, uh, exploited the aviation sector as it should be. I think we are still just treating it at the very rudimentary level of passenger movement. Previously, uh, I'm talking 10, 20, 25, 30 years ago, an airport was an infrastructure provider. We still are an infrastructure provider, but going forward and what the airports both in Europe, in Asia and also in America is that they are more focused on the business part of things. So an airport is more a business today. I see that KAA is lacking that gene and that's one of the things that I will build while I'm here. Nairobi is a strategic location whose potential Kenya has yet to take full advantage of with signs that the African and Asian markets 
are set to grow faster than other markets in the world. Africa is very important to us. 60% of our revenue is generated out of Africa. One of the issues that uh, is, is really important is to increase the capacity, specifically on the runway part. And the capacity that we have today on the current runway is, is not, not enough to cater for the traffic that could, could uh, be, be directed towards Kenya. Uh, from, for example, uh, Asia. And that marks the end of our show. I remember in this particular episode, we've been looking at how aviation works and the contribution of that sector to Kenya's economy. And as I had told our viewers at the beginning of this show, after a one and a half year journey, 80 episodes non-stop, the Chamada Report now takes a season break. But Elijah, it's just a break for the Chamada Report. I'm sure Champs Media will continue to produce lots of content. And for you, you may be on air in one way or another soon. Exactly. And it's on that note that we want to thank you, our viewers, for watching the Chamada Report for that time it was on air. From the team here, it's a wrap. My name is Elijah Mwangi. And I'm Alex Chamada. Bye-bye for, for now. now.